hi all the students so, today's video is a continuation of our previous video wherein we were studying the reference models and i told you there are two example reference models one is your osi reference model which is also known as the open system interconnection model and the second one is your tcp ip reference model which is also known as transmission control protocol internet protocol model so uh, let's look into the layers of the tcpi reference model today so in yesterday's video we have seen or in the previous video we have seen all the layers that the osi reference model has today we are going to see the layers of the tcpip reference model so uh, the tcpip reference model which is also known as transmission control protocol internet protocol t for transmission c for control p for protocol and ip stands for internet protocol so we are going to see the layers of the tcpip reference model as compared to the osi reference model the tcpip reference model has only four layers we saw that the osi reference model has seven layers but the tcpip reference model has four layers now what these four layers are these are the host to internet layer the internet layer the transport layer and the application layer i can i will explain it through a diagram also like here you can see we have made two diagrams in order to make have a better comparison between the osi reference model and the tcpip reference model so you can clearly see here that the osi reference model has these seven layers which include the physical layer the data link layer the network layer transport layer session layer presentation layer and application layer whereas compared to osi the tcpip has only four layers the application layer it also has the transport layer it also has then in place of the network layer it has the internet layer and then it has the host to network layer so you can clearly see that these two layers which are the presentation layer and the session layer are not there in tcpip reference model the presentation layer and the session layer of the osi reference model are not present in the tcpip reference model so in total the layers four layers the tcpip reference model has which include the host to network layer the internet layer the transport layer and the application layer now let's look into detail what all functions these layers are performing so we will start with the lowest layer first that is the host to network layer now the host to network layer as we can see uh the tcpip reference model if i talk of the tcpip reference model it does not say much about this layer right you can clearly see that below the internet layer there is a void after the host to network layer below the internet layer there is a void and the tcpip reference model itself does not say much about the host to network layer so it does not tell what is exactly happening here by by this i mean that this model does not tell exactly what is happening over here except that the host allows you to connect to the network using some protocol now what that protocol is exactly that is not mentioned in this model it only tells you that the host to network layer helps you to connect to the network using some kind of protocol but exactly which protocol and what exactly happens here this is not mentioned in the model tcpip reference model itself so what it is doing it is helping you to connect to the network so that you can send the packets now the packets that are used in tcp ip are known as the ip packets so it helps you to connect to the network so that you can send the ip packets to the network now this protocol uh, i mean what protocol you are using here is not defined and so it varies from host to 
host and network to network i mean depending upon the type of network you are using it can vary or uh, it can vary from host to host so exactly which protocol you are using here that is not mentioned the only thing that is mentioned about this particular layer is that it helps you to connect to the network so that you can send ip packets to the other network now let's look at the other layer which is your internet layer now what is the internet layer doing your internet layer basically allows you to inject or send packets into any network by any network i mean any network so it basically allows the host on the network to inject or send packets into any network and have them travel independently to the destination by uh, by saying that travel independently i mean that there is no fixed or dedicated connection between the source and the destination so every new message from the source to the destination can, same source to the same destination can take different paths unlike a connection oriented service wherein there is a dedicated connection between the same source and the same destination and all the messages from the source to destination take that fixed path in a connection less service the uh, there are several paths between the source and destination and the messages from the same source to the same destination can take several independent paths so basically the type of connection that we are referring to here is the connection less or the packet switching network right so we are uh, the uh, connection that is basically used here is the packet switching network so this permits the host to inject packets into the network and into any network and then the messages from the source to destination can travel independently and potentially on different networks so you can transmit the packets from one source to another destination on different networks that means the source can be on a different network and the destination can be on a different network right now uh, what happens is that when you choose different paths for uh, different packets from the sa same source to same destination they may arrive out of order when they are sent to the uh, destination because uh, it it may happen the packet which is sent first receives is received later and the packet which was sent later is received before that packet so this means that the packets may arrive out of order to the destination when they travel through independent paths right so in that case the layers which are above the internet layer it becomes the task of the layers above the internet layer to rearrange to rearrange those packets rearranging means again arranging them in the same sequence in which they were before being transmitted to the destination right so it is the task of the layers above the internet layer or the higher layers to rearrange those packets once they arrive at the destination now uh, one another thing that you must uh, know here is that the internet layer that we call it this particular layer defines an official packet format there is an official packet format and protocol called the internet protocol so the protocol that is used here is officially defined by or declared by this layer and it is known as your ip or the internet protocol the job of the internet layer is to deliver these ip packets which are so the packets uh, are known as the ip packets and the protocol which is being used is known as the ip protocol and the full form of ip is internet protocol so the job of the internet layer is to deliver these ip packets uh, to deliver these ip packets wherever they are supposed to go or in other words the job of the internet layer is to transmit the uh, ip packets to the 
destination to the correct destination right so if it is the job of the internet layer to see that the packets are delivered to the correct destination then it is quite obvious that a major issue in this layer would be the packet routing that means a proper route is chosen for the packet so that the uh, arrive at the correct destination so this is somewhat similar to the network layer of the osi model whose job is also to see that a proper routing is chosen um, a proper route is chosen so that the packets are delivered to the right destination and at the same time that route must be an optimal route so in this uh, seeing this scenario we can see that the internet layer is similar to the network layer of the osi reference model so i hope the internet layer is clear now let's move to the another layer the third layer of the tcp ip reference model which is your transport layer now the transport layer is above the internet layer as i have shown you in the diagram the transport layer is immediately above the internet layer and uh, it is designed to allow your peer entities like peer entities means the peer layers one peer layer on another on one host and another peer layer on another host or it could be a uh, two uh, programs or uh, two peer routers so any peer entity it allows the peer entities to carry on a conversation on the source and destination of course that means the peer entities on source and the peer entities on destination are able to carry on a conversation using the transport layer so uh, this is just similar to the transport layer of the osi reference model as i told you while explaining the osi reference model that the transport layer is a true end to end layer why an end to end layer because it allows the source on one host uh, because it allows the source to directly communicate with the destination without using their immediate neighbors so the immediate neighbors are not required to carry on a conversation between a source and destination the source and destinations can directly carry on a conversation such layers are known as end to end layers so it also allows the peer entities to directly carry on a conversation by peer entities i mean it could be anything it could be two um, people it could be two routers it could be two processors that are on the same layer or on the same level they can directly carry on a conversation using the transport layer of the tcp ip reference model and in this respect it is similar to the osi ref a uh, transport layer because the transport layer of the osi reference model is also an end to end layer and it does the same task that is allowing the source and destination to directly communicate with each other without using their immediate neighbors so this is what i mean by an end to end layer and similarly so the tc uh, the transport layer of the tcp ip reference model is also an end to end layer so with this respect we can say that it is similar to the transport layer of the osi reference model clear now uh, there are two protocols which are uh, which are defined here now since this is an end to end layer so i call these protocols also end to end why because using these protocols only you can carry out on end to end conversation all right so i call them two end to end protocols now what are these two end to end protocols one is your tcp protocol which is known as the transmission control protocol and another is your udp protocol which is the user datagram protocol so basically they are uh, i can say that two protocols are used at the transport layer the tcp protocol and the udp protocol now let's have a look at uh, these protocols 
when do you use the tcp protocol and when do you use the udp protocol so when you need a reliable connection oriented service that means you want an acknowledgement reliable means you want an acknowledgement with that whether your data has been successfully transmitted or not so uh, and there is and obviously it will be reliable when there is a dedicated connection between the source to destination and the packets randomly do not choose any path they choose one dedicated path and all the packets from one source will use the same path so that is why i say reliable connection oriented because all the packets uh, use the same dedicated path as well as the transmitter or the sender gets an acknowledgement for each packet that it sends so whenever you want such kind of a reliable connection oriented service you choose the tcp protocol okay so uh, basically what it does is that it fragments the incoming bytes or the incoming messages into smaller or discrete messages and then passes them on to the internet layer now the internet layer as i can see is below the uh, tr um, below the transport layer and you know that the layer which is immediately above passes on data and control information so this is what the trans uh, transport layer is also doing since the transport layer is above the internet layer so what it does whatever incoming messages or incoming bytes uh, stream it receives it fragments them into smaller units or discrete messages and then passes uh, them on to the internet layer which is immediately below the transport layer now at the destination uh, at the destination the uh, receiving tcp protocol or the receiving tcp process by tcp process i mean uh, by tcp process mean i mean the process that is using tcp protocol because obviously two parties can communicate only when they are using the same protocol so if the sending process is using the tcp protocol so it is very compulsory for the receiving uh, uh, process also to use the tcp protocol because only then they can communicate with each other if they are using the same protocol so if the uh, sending process is using tcp so it's quite obvious the receiving or this destination process will also use the tcp so the destination tcp process reassembles the received messages into the output stream so whatever messages it has got it will reassemble them in a proper sequence and then uh, and then it will convert it into an output stream so this is how the tcp protocol is used and this is for what reasons you use the tcp protocols another responsibility of the tcp protocol in the transport layer is to handle flow control as i have already told you also that flow control is used to make sure that a fast sender cannot swamp a slow receiver with more messages than it can handle and how it does that by knowing the buffer capacity of the receiver now let's move on to the udp or the user datagram protocol now the user datagram is used in those situations wherein the reliability is not that important you so you choose for an unreliable connectionless service there is no connectionless means there is no dedicated connection between the source and destination so out of various paths available the different packets from the same source to the same destination can choose different independent paths and unreliable because there is no headache of acknowledgments in this kind of a service so if you prefer to choose an unreliable connectionless service then you can use the user datagram protocol or the udp so basically applications that do not want tcp pro tcp protocols sequencing or flow control so such kind of applications can use your user datagram protocol it is basically uh, widely used for some client server type of applications like client server type i mean where one system sends a request and the other system processes the requests and 
uh, uh, sends back the answer so like uh, as i told you a client service system where uh, like when you are sitting on your system you are using the client system and when on your web browser you search for facebook then uh, the, your hypertext transfer protocol sends that search request to the server and then finally when you get to see the home page of facebook that is as a result of the server processing your request and sending back a reply so such kind of systems are known as client server systems wherein one system se uh, sends a request and the other system processes that request and sends you the reply so the udp or the user datagram protocol is basically used for such kind of client server system applications wherein there are queries and those queries are then processed and replied and in which prompt delivery is more important than accurate delivery right such as some real time uh, such as when there is some real time data which has to be sent like your video conferencing or uh, transmitting speech so in such cases a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, you know unreliability does not matter a few pixels here and there won't matter but on time delivery is really important because what i am talking to you right now you should be able to hear right now only if you hear it one minute later that will not serve the serve purpose so basically for real time data such as audio and video wherein a few pixels here and there do, do not matter that means reliability is not of that much importance but on time delivery is important in such applications you use the user data gram protocol and in situations wherein reliable delivery is very important and on time delivery does not matter that much because uh, that means a few seconds here and there would not matter but uh, accuracy and reliability matters like the file transfer in such cases you use the transmission control protocol or the tcp now let's look at the another layer which is your last and fourth layer that is the application layer now what is the task of an application layer in a tcp ip reference model the uh, application layer now as you saw in the diagram the tcp ip reference model directly has the application layer after the transport layer as you could see there was a void after transport uh, after the transport layer there was no other layer between the transport layer and application layer why uh, it does not have any session or presentation layer after the transport layer directly it has the application layer because it was uh, no need for felt at that time when this model was being designed no need for the uh, session layer or the presentation layer was perceived at that time that is why they were not included in the model and then later on with experience in the osi reference model it it was proven that these layers are not really that important so they were found of very little use so hence later on uh, this was proved to be correct that these layers are not of that importance all right now moving on you can see that on top of the transport layer you have the application layer right it consists all the higher level protocols which are must for carrying out any conversation between the source and the destination either on the same network or on different networks now we have some early uh, protocols which are already there at the time it was this model was built and there then some new ones were added on so we have both the list of all those protocols now available with us because both all the protocols are being used the early ones also and the added ones also so the if i talk of the <coughs> early ones they were the telnet protocol which is also known as the virtual terminal protocol then the ftp prot protocol which is known as the file transfer protocol the email protocol which is smtp which is known as simple mail transfer protocol now we will study in brief about all these protocols first of all we will study about the early ones which were already there so if i talk of telnet see the uh, it is known as the virtual terminal file it is known as the virtual terminal why was the uh, telnet there to provide you in uh, in cases of remote 
login so telnet was basically helpful in you, uh, allowing you to have remote login then you had your file transfer protocol uh, one more thing about the virtual terminal protocol is that as i told you that it helps you to re, uh, for remote lo login that means it allows a user on one machine to log on a distant machine and work there sitting on your system you can log into a system which is far away from there and you can work on your system uh, as if you are working there so this is known as remote login so telnet protocol is used for such purposes now the file transfer protocol provides a way to move data efficiently from one machine to another which is in the form of files right so when you want to transfer your files or then what protocol you are using in that case the protocol that you use is known as the file transfer protocol or the ftp moving on electronic mail now in today's day there is no one who does not know about the email or electronic mail electronic mail originally was just a kind of file transfer now you have so many other things added to it uh, like your audio video multimedia so many things but earlier it was just used for simple file transfer and later a specialized protocol which is known as smtp was developed for it smtp basically stands for simple mail transfer protocol right now uh, many uh, over the years many other protocols have been added to the application layer which i said are the added ones and they include your dns which stands for the domain name system they include your http which stands for your hypertext transfer protocol they include your nntp which stands for your network news transfer protocol right now let's look uh, look into these protocols also so basically what is domain name system doing domain name system or the dns is used for mapping host names onto their network addresses right now a network recognizes any uh, process any uh, web page by its address when you type facebook.com the network does not recognize it by facebook.com facebook.com has its own address which it must have got at the time of registration in the network right so the network recognizes facebook by its own unique address but when you you do you cannot remember the you being a human cannot remember the addresses of so many websites so how do you recognize them you recognize or remember them by their names so for example when you are typing www.facebook.com so how is the server system responding to it you are sitting on your client system and typing www.facebook.com and then then re this request goes to the server system but how do does the server system recognize that you are asking for facebook.com it does not recognize your alphabets it only knows the addresses so the domain name system does the task of translating the web name of the website into its unique address which has been assigned to it and then the web server recognizes that okay this is the page that you are requesting for then it uh, processes your request and sends you back a reply which is in the form of the home page of your facebook page right so domain name system is doing the task of translating the names of the pages that you type uh, it does the task of translating the names of the pages that you type to their addresses so that the server knows exactly what you are asking for so this is the role of the domain name system or the dns that you call it then you have the http which is the hypertext transfer protocol so the hypertext transfer protocol helps you to fetch pages on the world wide web like whatever requests are going to the server are going through the http so remember do not get confused dns is doing the task of translating right dns is the translator here which is converting the web name of the web page into its address whereas http is helping you to send that request or in other words it is helping you to fetch a page from the web server http hypertext transfer protocol next protocol that you have is your nntp which whose full form is network news transfer protocol 
Now, what is network news transfer protocol doing? It is used for moving the Usenet news articles around. Listen carefully. NNTP, which is also known as network news transfer protocol, is helping to move the Usenet news around. Okay, you understand it helps to use some kind of Usenet news around. Usenet you are not aware of. You are better understand that it helps to move the news around. What kind of a news am I talking about? The Usenet news. Now, what is this new word Usenet? First of all, Usenet stands for users network, a network that is meant for the users of the system or the users of the network. So, Usenet is your users network. So, NNTP is helping to move the users network news around. A network which has been meant for the users, the NNTP is helping to move the news of that network to move around. What is user's network? As of now, all that we need to know is that a user's network is an internet-based internet network of discussion groups. So, there is a network of discussion groups which is internet-based and to help to move the news around uh, such usenet or such user's network, the protocol that is used is NNTP. So, what it is doing by means moving around, by me uh, saying that moving the usenet news around, I mean that moving uh, the news between servers and client systems for reading, posting articles by the end users so that the end users which are or in a simple language i can say the end users who are sitting at the client applications or who are sitting at the client systems can read as well as post news uh, 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 by uh, as as well as post news using this particular protocol which is the NNTP. So that means moving around means you can move the news around between the client systems and the server systems. So when you are posting, even then you need a client and server system. When you want to read, even then you need a client server system. So basically moving your news between the client application and the server application so that the users who are using Usenet can post the news also and read the news also on the user's network. So NNTP is that, uh, is that such protocol that is allowing you to do that.